The best chassis on the grid, they said. We are going to win races in 2018, they said. We have as good of a car as Red Bull do, they said. McLaren had plenty of things to say coming into 2018. But today this is what I have to say on what is one of the most embarrassing seasons in McLaren's history. Before we get into the team's performance though, let's first get into the drivers and first Fernando Alonso. Who despite the McLaren car being so bad still was very very good in 2018. As he scored points in the first 5 races in Australia, Bahrain, Shanghai, Baku and his home race in Spain. Fernando was getting the best out of that car if not even more. And was showing exactly why McLaren pay him so much money. But then after the introduction of the B-spec car, McLaren and Fernando Alonso's season fell apart. As the car became so slow there was nothing Fernando could do with this crap car. As most of the time he got nowhere near the points. He would though get points finishes at races like Austria, Silverstone, Hungary and Singapore. But this was literally Fernando just making the best of a bad situation. As the car still was not really good enough to finish in these kind of positions. And in 2018, I think Fernando did get the best out of this McLaren car. As the 2018 McLaren, to say the least, was a horror show. And it's a miracle that he scored points the amount of times that he actually did. But this is what Fernando did in 2018. So his best race result was P5 in Australia and his best qualifying result was P7 in Monaco. And he also had 9 points finishes and ended up with 50 points. Which again is very good considering how bad the McLaren car was. Now for me this season Fernando didn't really have any bad races because he was getting the best he could out of this car. So I'm only going to focus on his best races and for me his best race was Austria. Where he was near the back of the grid and he finished up in 8th. A position where the car at that point did not deserve to be at all. There are races for sure like Silverstone, Hungary and Singapore which were very good but for me Austria is the best because of where he started on the grid. How he really got into the points I don't know. As there were other races this season where Fernando had a better chance of points and he didn't get into the points because the car was so bad. So did a commendable job in Austria. But this is most likely going to be Fernando Alonso's final season in F1. It for sure could have been better but he still showed the talent that he does have. And hopefully in what he does in 2019 he is a lot more successful. Now we'll go on to Stoffel van Dorn who had a really bad 2018 season. But the first few races weren't that bad where he finished in the points in about 3 of them. For example P9 in Australia, P8 in Bahrain and then P9 at Baku. And by the time we got to the Monaco Grand Prix, even though he didn't score points in Spain and Monaco, he was looking quite good still. But coinciding with the McLaren car becoming absolutely terrible, his performance also dropped. And having what was effectively a broken chassis did not help Van Dorn's performance in the summer. As from Canada on, he was far off the pace and his season just fell apart. And would only get one more points finish in Mexico where he did finish in P8. Which honestly right now I'd have to say was his best race of 2018 because of how surprising it was. Because he was quite low down on the grid. So great there from Van Dorn but it did not save his McLaren career. As this is what he did in 2018. In 2018 his best race result was 8th and his best qualifying result was P11 at Monaco. But only had 4 points finishes and ended up with 12 measly points. Even though the car was bad, he didn't do enough to earn a seat at McLaren for 2019 ahead of Lando Norris. And now instead is going to Formula E. And hopefully in that series Van Dorn can find some success. Because I'm afraid McLaren have kind of destroyed his career like they've done to Kevin Magnussen and Sergio Perez. McLaren just tend to destroy young drivers careers and they've done it with Stoffel Van Dorn also. So hopefully in a similar way to Kevin Magnussen he can find his way back into the sport. Because for sure there is some talent there. But now let's get on to the main event McLaren. Who coming into 2018 had some pretty high hopes. They thought they could win races, get some podiums and be right up there with Red Bull in 2018. But after the first day of testing it was clear they were not going to be anywhere near the top of the field. And this picture right here describes their pre-season testing and to be fair their 2018 season. An absolute disaster. 
as in pre-season they had no pace and also they had quite a lot of reliability issues, especially with overheating parts at the back of the car. It wasn't looking good for McLaren going into race one, but in the first four races before the European season their results were actually not too bad. By finishing P5 in Australia, P7 in Bahrain, P7 in China and then P7 in Baku all with Fernando Alonso. All they had to work on was getting the qualifying pace right because they were quite bad on a Saturday. But compared to Red Bull, well, there was no comparison. Red Bull were miles ahead, with McLaren's season prediction looking very silly. But at the start of the European season in Spain, McLaren brought a new B-spec car. Effectively, a completely new car. But in reality, it didn't really make any difference. As even though they scored points at the Spanish Grand Prix, they failed at Monaco. And McLaren knew that after Monaco, things were not looking good. And from Canada on, they were absolutely right as they had one of the worst cars on the grid down there with Williams. And were not even at times in the midfield, sometimes they were back markers. With their cars being the first to be lapped by the front runners. 2018 for McLaren now became an embarrassment. As despite rare points finishes, McLaren's car was getting worse and not better as every time they brought an upgrade, their car was getting worse. Especially after the summer break at Spa, where they fell down the pack even further, and would end up from Spa until Abu Dhabi only scoring points twice, in Singapore and Mexico. But to all the other races, they were miles off the pace, even off the midfield pace, as this season for McLaren has to rival 2015 in being such an embarrassment. And you could argue it was worse in 2018 because at times they were irrelevant. Which is amazing to think because this is McLaren, one of the most successful teams in the sports history. But I'm afraid that's just the way it's going for McLaren. And this is how bad their 2018 was. They had a best race result of P5 in Australia and a best qualifying result of P7 at Monaco. With 13 points finishes, the majority of them being Fernando Alonso and 62 points. And they finished in P6 in the Constructors. But considering where they thought they would be, this was terrible. And in terms of the car performance, their only good races for me were Spain and Monaco. Because not only was their race pace quite good, but also was their qualifying pace. And Spain and Monaco is the strongest McLaren have looked in 2018. As after these two races, they fell off a cliff. Now when it comes to their worst races of the season, there's plenty to pick from. But I am going to say France not only just because of the car being so bad at that Grand Prix, but because of the whole Fredo Gate thing that came out at the same time, which at the time just laid further embarrassment on this great team. And this was probably their lowest point. But how do McLaren in 2019 and beyond improve on this? To be honest guys, I'd have to make a separate video just for that because there are so many things they have to change at this team to improve going forward. As in 2019, I don't see it getting any better, especially with Zach Brown still at the team. As for me, Zach Brown is not fit to run that team and is just basically a used car salesman. He is not experienced or good enough in that role. He has to go. But what they need to do is start putting the people in place to be good, not next season, but in a few years time. And also have a plan of where you want to be in 2021 or 2022 like Renault have. Because Renault right now, because they've set a goal for 2021, are a lot closer than McLaren are to the top of the field. So McLaren have to plan for the long term and stop thinking short term. Because they're not going to improve their car and suddenly be two seconds faster than they were the year before. It is incredibly unrealistic to expect such a thing. So set out a plan of where you want to be in, say, five years time. And slowly but surely build towards that. But also another thing they have to stop doing is stop this hype train nonsense in the pre-season. Because it's not helping the situation at McLaren and is actually making things worse. And is also showing up and embarrassing the team. McLaren realistically in 2018 were never going to be on a par with Red Bull. So why set yourself such an unrealistic target in such a short amount of time? But don't worry guys, the hype train has actually already started. And Zach Brown has come out and said that McLaren are on the road to recovery. That is absolute rubbish. 
until he is gone from the team and this team stops hyping themselves up in the preseason and they build a plan going forward, they are not on the road to recovery. They are instead on the road to becoming a meme. Because with the unrealistic targets, they get shown up every single season since 2013. This team is in dire need of a good leader. And that man is not Zach Brown. But if Zach remains at the team, you can be assured this is going to continue to get worse and worse. So if you are a McLaren fan, then don't worry. Because it's going to get even worse in 2019. But anyway guys, that's has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I'll be back on Thursday with a season review of Renault, Haas and Force India. Also, don't forget to join my Discord server link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and what did you think of McLaren's embarrassing 2018. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Tazzer HD. Goodbye.